Here we go. Now it's working. Okay, so we just jumped up. I don't know what point this class disappeared, but I have to go over. It. Still going? The cord? Yeah. So we were talking about the ache of Ithra to Mashiach, where the hill steps, where the dead skin is lacking sensitivity. We don't always attach ourselves to the light and the life force that's in ourselves, in our religion, in our spirituality, in our inner world. And it's the same with the menorah. You know, the menorah is an opportunity. A person worldwide can advertise the miracle. Like we said, every non-Jew in the world is, gets lit up by Hanukkah. Matis song, everyone knows about that song. I believe in miracles. Uh, it's, everyone knows about Hanukkah. It's something that's a worldwide event, and Hashem wants it to be that way. He wants us to light up the left side. Which, what, who do we associate with the left? Come on, guys. Who's the left? The liberals. Even the liberals get lit up on Hanukkah, yeah? This is the idea, it goes everywhere. It goes down to the tenth to into the lowest aspects. But now we have to know what is this big awe that is coming down. And this is where we start to go to the inner aspect of it, not just the external wisdoms. But now, what's go- where is it going down to? What's coming down to such a holy place? And how does this connect to the Pasha? We hinted at it a little bit with Yaakov. Yaakov bringing down this youth, this shaman. But there's also this idea in this week's Pasha, there's eight kings. Yeah? Eight kings. Who are these eight kings connected to? Asa, because Asa met when to live in Harseya. Yeah? There were eight kings that, that lived and died. Yeah? That lived and died. So, you know that? so now, the eighth one was called Hoda. That meant he never died, because it said, it said by him he never mentioned death. And this Hoda was representing a Mahajim in a Mahajim. This is a hint in the Pasha to Hanukkah. We said that at the beginning. And everything has hints. And we know with the war with Yaakov and Esau, Yaakov protecting himself from Esau, Esau represents the focus only on this world. He wasn't interested in the choir, he wasn't interested in the soul. He just wanted to live it up, man. You know what I'm saying? So that was Asa's story. So Asa, he came and he wanted, it seemed like he was coming to hug his brother, but really he was coming to kill him. And my son said to me if you, uh, yet last night, what happened to Asa next? It's a famous midrash that all the kids like drawing. It, it turned to what? To marble. So he told it to Yaakov's neck. And Asa went to kiss her. And Yaakov's uh, teeth smashed because he really went to, to bite him like a vampire or something. I don't know. So, it was, you know, these are kids' stories. But the point is that we have to know that the hatred of Esau is actually something positive, says the Zedekim. It keeps away the, the connection becoming too strong. As we see in this generation, the spiritual holocaust is not just the... the uh, it's not just that Esau tried to kill us during the holocaust, but Esau tried to kill us spiritually now, but as an achi as a brother, yeah? as a brother, that intermarriage and everything. So Hanukkah gives us a certain realization that we are a nation that's coming from the world of eight. These are these eight kings. Because it says, what, why would it bring these eight kings? What's that got to do with our life? You care? Jake, you're reading about these eight kings. They live, they die, they live, they die. Eight kings, different names, funny names, Hanan and all this kind of stuff. And then you get to Harda. Like, what do you care? No, yeah, because inside those eight kings, when you read them in the shul, there's a light in the Pasha. Every time you read the Torah in the shul, Shabbos, that's one of the things we like to talk about, is how to get the light from what we're doing in Judaism, how to attach ourselves to the spirituality. So this Shabbos, when you're reading about the eight kings, brother, those eight kings light us up. Why? Because they're the eight can, they're the eight days of Hanukkah. That's the here? hidden aspect. Yeah, it doesn't bring it on this list, but that, that's the idea of Had Mahajan. Mahajan never dies. Mahajan Mahajan. The Hanukkah shows there's a certain hidden, this idea of glorifying the mitzvahs. Zerkeli Minivail, Mi Hashem Alai. Who's for Hashem? Machami screamed out, the Levim screamed out, screamed out at the times of Legal Azab. Who is for Hashem? Who is for Hashem? Who's for Hashem? That's the whole thing. You have to decide in your life. The world's, the world's saying who's not for Hashem. And we have to say who is for Hashem? Who wants Hashem? Who wants the name? Who wants the, the creator of the world? Who wants to attach ourselves to the truth of what this world the awe, the spirituality underneath everything, the, the hidden light that's in the menorah. So we're going to see where it, what is, how's it manifest. And now look, look at this sheet, guys. We're going to see the first night of Hanukkah. We're going to have Yosef Kaduna here. So you already know that night you're going to get lit up by a very big sadder. His name's Yosef, Yosef Asada. Yosef is Beis Yaakov. Aish, Beish Yosef Lahabas, first night of Hanukkah. Yeah? We're going to have a Hanukkah party, Wednesday night. 
Yeah. We're here Wednesday night. We're going to have a great Hanukkah party, guys. It's going to be rocking. I'm telling you, this guy is a Kaduna. Everyone should be here. Everyone should be dancing. Rabbi Yudin is going to be here before he goes away for his wedding. So it's like a little bit like a preparation for his wedding. We've got, we've got to really, you know, make the whole big party here. And the first night of Hanukkah is connected to the Masechta. Because we're saying that there's Lamid Bab Masechtas in Shas. There is 60 Masechtas in Shas, Mishnais. But that we've turned into the Gemara, the town of Babylon, was 30. And 36 is a very significant number. It's the 36 hidden Siddiquim in every generation. And here on this sheet, it tells us it's the 36 receptors of Shas. And you can light the first night of Hanukkah just by lighting the candles. All you have to do is, to, is say a mitzvah, light it in the right place, either by the window or down on the floor next to the door with, on the left, with the mezuzah on the right. And you light this candle and you make a bracha. Some people say Shel Hanukkah, but the reason why the Mukabalim say Ne'er Hanukkah without the shell is because the words Lahadik Ne'er Hanukkah it spells out a very, very holy net shame, a very holy thing. It's called, it's called Nachal. It means, you heard of Nachal? Rabbi, Rabbi Nachman, they're called Nachal Nevei Chochma. It's this, this overflowing river. Nachal is this river of, of light that comes down and we light. So if you put the shell, it, it makes a little bit different spelling. So it points out Rizzo. I mean, it's different. Each one has its holiness in the, each minhag. Each custom is holy. But the Arizal says Nacha. So I just bring down this Nacha. Nacha is also, we're going to see, is Noit Sechesi Lolofim. It's a very high level of mercy. And this is already Kabbalistic I'm getting into. I'm jumping ahead already. But let's go back to the Mesefta's Brokhas. So we made the Brokha Lahadik Ne'er Shachanaka, or Lahadik Ne'er Chanaka. And then we make the Brokha um, Shech um, Ala Nisim. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, guys, help me out. Brokha to Hashem Ne'er Shachanaka. Shachianu. No, Shasa Nisim Nava Sein. Just like Hashem did the miracle then, the nace, the nun from Cheshvan, remember you learned that? And the Samach from, from Kislev, Chodesh Kislev is Samach, you learned that with the oasis yeah. of the month. So that's nace, the miracle of this month. This miracle that was like that for them should be like that for us. We should live in a life, a life of miracles, of nace. A nace is also like a flag. It advertises Hashem in the world. That's one of the big myths. And Samach is the letter of the month. Yeah, we even said Shalom Bias is more important than adv- advertising the miracle in the world. So now we start to see how powerful this mitzvah is, even Shalom Bias is more important. Now we start to see how important Shalom Bias is. Then, the more, that's the more we learn about in the Hanukkah, we start to connect up other things we talked about. We start to see how powerful this mitzvah is. Yeah? If you have a choice, Jake, you went here to do a massive concert, and you say, yeah, but I'm going to make so many people religious and, and, and spiritual, because I'm talking about sham and true things in my words. Or you can be at home because your wife really needs you that night and really needs you. And you have another guy who could perform instead of you. He's just as good. Because you want the you want the honor. And you and you ask a rabbi, the rabbi will tell you it's better to be at home. If your wife needs you that night, you've got to be home. Now, I'm, I'm right now going to go speak to a rabbi in Jerusalem about this. I have to get advice every so on about how to be a better husband. My wife's not well. So I'm going to get advice. You know, the, the merit of this learning, my wife should have for transverse fire, my mother, and then the Hanaliba uh, Simcha. And all the people who not feeling well should have a shleim. Hanukkah brings down the fours. It says, it says in the Gemara, Funa Bishminis. The Fuhas come with the eighth. It's the eighth brok of Shimon Esrei. And it, the Fuhas, the healing comes with the eighth. Because when you're above this world, it brings down the it brings down healing. Because then your body gets touched back into the source of life. And that brings down the healing, the renewal. You got that, brother? So now, the Ne'er Aleph, the first night of Hanukkah, brings down the light of Brochus. Mesefta's Brochus. You know what Mesefta's Brochus is all about? We're learning it here. It's about Amunah. The first things first, before you can learn the rest of Shas, you've got to jump into Amunah. Belief. You've got to believe in Hashem. So the first night we're going to dance here, we're going to be in the light of Amunah. Also, the eight nights of Hanukkah connected to the eight the Godim of the Kohen Godel. The Kohen Godel, every person when they light the Hanukkah light, becomes like a Kohen Godel. That was Aaron and Cohen's Kavana. This is a very, very, very deep idea. But this is my own Kiddush. And if it's wrong, which I don't think it is at all, I think it's Emma Sunito. Aaron and Cohen, I once asked Sadiq about it. I think they said it's Emma Sunito. Aaron and Cohen, I'm a, I'm a Cohen, so I have a big connection to this. My forefather said, Me Hashem alive. We were for Hashem. We didn't, we didn't go do the Egelazah. We were there with Moses. We were, that's what our Chavetz Chaim once said. Someone came in and said, "No, the difference between me and you." He said, "I'm a Cohen." And my great-great-grandfather said, "Me Hashem alive." He said, "We're for Hashem." 
we're not giving up, no matter what, even in a time of tragedy like the Egel Azab. And the Greeks tried to use that Egel Azab. They said they were worshipping other things. So the Kohenim have a special condition, but now but the Kohen Godol, which I'm not a Kohen Godol, the Kohen Godol, yeah? Jake, the Kohen Godol, listen, it's very important. The Kohen Godol, you fight the sleep, you get much more of a mitzvah than a guy who's not tired. The Kohen Godol, Kislev is a month for sleeping. Everyone wants to sleep this month. It's a big fight. Kohen Godol is the Holy of Holies. He goes into the holiest place. And this is a person who, from Aaron Cohen, had tremendous avarice as well. It says, Oyev Sholem, Rod of Sholem, Makarvin Brias Latoyer. He had a tremendous love for Sholem. And Aaron Cohen represents the meter of Sholem. When he blesses the Jewish people, the Kohen Godol, the Kohenim, <coughs> He blesses it with love, and it ends off with shalom. Love and shalom. He said, Aish, Aish is Rosh Tabus, Ahava and shalom. This is the fire, Jake, you've got to have of us, the love and peace. And this is Anna Cohen's light. This is the kind God's light. Now look at this. What is this first night? Myth and Messiah. We're connecting into the light of the kind God. And Aaron Cohen wants every Jew to have a, have a connection to that. He wants everyone to become a Kohen God, to have those eight garments from the Kohen God, to have a connection to those eight, eight nights of Hanukkah, to everyone to be like him. That was Aaron Cohen. When all the tribes brought, the princes of the tribes brought their offerings, on the eighth day of Hanukkah, we read these offerings. What's the completion after the tribes bring those, those eight, off, eight days of offerings, which ends up being 12 because there's 12 tribes, but we only have eight days of Hanukkah because we read all 12 during the eight. So what's, what's the climax? What's the 13th? What's, what's, what's the 13th candle? The 13th tribe, in a way, the Kohanim, the Levim. They're the, the level of 13 is Gematcha Avra, which is Gematcha Achad, one. They're connected to the oneness. They bring down this idea of oneness to the world. And who's, who's Aaron Cohen, holy brother? Aaron Cohen wanted so much to bring an offering, but because Leo Levim weren't part of these 12 tribes anymore, they went to a higher level, the 13, and he had such a chuka in Parshish Balosika, we learn about it, that he was blessed with right after the 12 tribes brought their 12 offerings which we read during the 8 days of Hanukkah the 13th Pasha we read the 13th offering is the candles of Aaron Cohen. he gets to have the mitzvah of menorah he gets the mitzvah of lighting up the menorah in the base of Midrash this menorah is the hidden light being revealed that's Aaron Cohen. that's how he's bringing back the creation to Hashem that's how he's lying you and me up now in this generation Aaron Cohen was busy with the guys who were busy with sin and he was bringing them back, who we were busy with arguments. He's the light of Hod. Hod goes all the way down to the lowest places and picks it up. Hod Shabahod. Who's the Nisham of Hod Shabahod? The Bishimim Bayochai. Who's, who's born and dies on Rosh Chodesh Av? Aaron of Cohen. His, and Chodesh Av is the fifth month. And on the, yeah, and the fifth day of the fifth month is, is the Arizal. Yeah, the Arizal is the fifth of the fifth. That's Hod. And what's the fifth meter? Fifth, the fifth meter is Hod. Hod is to be machneer yourself. Is to humble yourself and to lift up the lower places. That's the light of Shimba Yochai. That's the light of Aaron Cohen. It goes everywhere. And he had such a desire that everyone should have a connection to that light that he gave us the mitzvah of Hanukkah. His descendants, the Maccabees, brought us Hanukkah. And Hanukkah lights us up, even in this generation which is so fallen, and lights us up in an unbelievable way. So that's, that's an amazing, amazing physic for our generation. Aaron Cohen had such a desire to, be, to give an offering to Shem that he was given the ultimate offering. Offering that would light up the Jewish people for all time, the, the mitzvah of Hanukkah. And everyone would become a Kohen Godel. Everyone would become like him. Can you imagine? There's no bigger way to bring Shalom in the world. That if you have all the blessings, you have all the blessings of, of wealth. When you're a Kohen Godel, you get the blessings of wealth for the Pits and Pitoras. When you're a Kohen Godel, you get to do the holiest of holy work. And the biggest level of Aaron Cohen was that everyone else should have that mitzvah as well. Everyone else should be enlightened or everyone else should be connected to this light of the Kohen Godel, not just him. He didn't keep it for himself. The ultimate way to share, to share with your light, your inspiration to others. Jake, you're going to have an opportunity when you go out from Ashrenu to share that light to others. That's like the menorah. You're lighting it up for everybody else to see. This is your special role. Nobody else could do it. No one else is going to get up on stage and perform like you. No one else is going to have that opportunity. And your job is to light up other people. It's not about keeping it to yourself and becoming a success just yourself. It's about sharing that success with others. And that's what Aaron Cohen did. That, get, that brings shalom and peace to the world. That's bringing Mashiach. 
So that's this idea of the eight garments of the Kohen Gadol. What do they do? Each of those eight garments, as you can see, fixes up different things. The first night, Mitzvah Masayim, his trousers, fix up Gilio Rice, fixes up the Mitzvah, uh, the, sorry, the Avera of, of, of going around doing, you know, whatever with, with, with other people's wives or, or women. It fixes up Gilio Rice because trousers is in a place which it covers it up. Yeah, covers it up, brings it holiness. So the first night, we're already fixing up that whole Avera. The Kohen Gadol is Machapa, it brings atonement for the Jewish people. It brings out the true essence that we're not connected to these, these terrible things. The Katonis fixes up Shif Domin, which is murder, that's the second night. Avnate fixes up Hero or Lave, which is thoughts of the heart. The Me'il is Losh and Horror, and obviously makes sense. There's a whole Torah about the Me'il, it's on the top part. And if it rips, it's puzzle. The, the, the Kohen Godel's garments, like the lips, have to be, have to be only used for good things. And to give inspiration to other people, the effort goes on the heart, uh, uh, around the, yeah, it goes around the person like an apron. This is on the Bodazor and the Khoshan is on Dinim, on, on any of the judgments, because that's what used to give other clear judgment to Jewish people. Mas Nefis gets rid of Gaiva, arrogance. This is the Gase Aruach, the, the, the inflated ego. It's Mas Nefis. It's, it, reminds a, it reminds a person the hat, sorry, the, the strike was like a turban. That reminds it humbles a person and the sits is Azaz, Azaz Ponim gets rid of the chutzpah our generation is filled with so much chutzpah it says before Mashiach comes chutzpah Yazgi the generation before Mashiach will be filled with chutzpah everyone relates to that? Yeah? you know people the kids the street life it's just, no one wants to listen to authority anymore it's apparently a new a new someone told me oh it's what's it called um, aggressive no some sort of like new new status for children uh, oppressive rep repression syndrome or something. I don't know what the, what the exact words are. But the bottom line is they don't want to hear any authority. Oppressive authority syndrome. They, they, they reject authority. It's a new syndrome. But we know what the Gemara says. It calls it chutzpah yazga. And it's something that chutzpah can use to fight the eight horror. But if it's used to be chutzpah to people that are respectable and, and have advice that can help you, then and it's obviously the wrong kind of chutzpah. So it sits by having the shame Hashem on top of the forehead. It reminds a person. It takes the him and lights it up with the name of God. That's the Siddiquim used to better look at people's foreheads. People were scared to go to that result because he'd see all their sins on their face. He could see the way the letters formed on their face and he could work out what they'd done. So people were scared to go to him because it was such a revelation of, of what they were really doing, of who they really were. It was too overwhelming sometimes. People were scared. It didn't mean they didn't go, they still went. But they, he gave them a path of repentance, how to sort themselves out. And that was Siddiquim all the generations. They were to see into a person's soul. I once went to a very holy rabbi, his name was Nachman Bulman. He wasn't known as a Sadiq, revealed Sadiq. But he could have been as one of the hidden Siddiquim. And one of the powers of his name, Nachman, was to penetrate deep. He was able to penetrate into me when I went to see him, and he was able to see what my real intentions were, and he was able to guide me out of that. And unfortunately, he only lived another year or two. But those two years, I connected to him very strongly. It changed my life. And it brought me to the path of, of the inner Torah. That's what he did. He has that merit. He told me to go on that journey. Now, the next part of this beautiful tablature, which we're learning, yeah? It then says that the 13 mitzvahs of, sorry, midas of Rachman. You got that? Yugi midas of Rachman. This is very, very important. Because Yom Kippur, we got sealed for a new year, Jake. But now Hanukkah comes and gives us a second chance. There's always a second chance, brother. There's always a second chance for you to come back. Yeah? The forces here want you to sleep. But you're going to fight it. That's what the Jewish people have to do. We're asleep. We have to wake up. We, we woke up during Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. We went back to sleep. So comes Hanukkah, it wakes us up again. And that's why the Yugnus of are here, that we say on Yom Kippur, these 13 attributes of mercy. And the first one, Kel, is the first night of Hanukkah, is, is pure Rachman. It's actually the highest level. It says by Yaakov in this week's Parsha, he was called Kel. Anyone knows about that? It's another hint in this Parsha for Hanukkah. Yaakov was called Kel, which is the 13th level of the Shem, of the 13 meters of, of mercy. It's the name of God, which represents mercy. And if Yaakov was called God, who would call a man God? Yeah, we say that's, that's some other religion. No, it's not. What? Someone called him God? No, who would call a man God? There's religions that call man God. They think God is man and they get all confused about this. What, what Hashem did in the Torah called Yaakov Kel, 
he called the Yaakov God, <coughs> not because he was God, but because he reached a certain attribute of godliness that was with such perfection that he had, he, that he was a walking expression of it in the world. Can you imagine that? That's how holy Yaakov was by the end of his story. He reached the level of Kel, and the Arabic nations also have 12 tribes that we read in Pasha's, what Pasha, who remembers, Chai Sarah. We read the 12 tribes of Ishmael, they, they try and fight the 12 tribes of the Jewish people. They have their, their 12 holidays, their 12 months, they have the, the moon calendar, they don't have the sun calendar. Why, what happens to us? Well, how do we balance out the sun calendar with the moon calendar? Asa follows the sun calendar, 365 days. Ishmael follows the moon calendar. We follow both. We have the moon and the sun. We take the moon and by adding on a leap month, a leap chodesh, we not, they don't only add on a few days in the Asa's calendar. We add on a month. And that month is the 13th level that nobody else can attach to. The Ishmaelim don't have this 13th tribe and the, non, and the, the uh, Christian world only has 12 months. We have 13th month. We have a 13th month, the second month of Adar. Adar takes us into the world of Rachman, the time of Purim. This year it's a, it's a leap year. This year we're going to have two Adars. And we're going to have Purim in the second Adar, in the time of the 13th, 13th level. This 13th level is connected to the 13th tribe, which we said was Levi. Yaakov taught Levi the Torah. Levi taught, carried on learning in Egypt. Levi became the Kohanim. This level of 13 continued on through the Levim and through the Kohanim. Why did just teach Shon Das, huh? Why? It became, there was different, each tribe had a different uh, main function. And the, the Levim were able to be the priests of the Jewish people, even before they were chosen. They were able to act that out, that they were, Yosef Asad separated them and gave them tithes so that they would be protected, so they could, they could keep the Jewish people alive spiritually. There could always be people connected to spirituality. No, just working. Always has to be a group of Jewish people learning that aren't involved with the world. It always has to be that. So I'm a Cohen, so I'm going to go quit my job and go learn for the rest of my life. Two things, I might, two things I might get fired anyway, so then I, I don't have to even quit. Um, but the point is, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try and keep my job, and I'm going to try and elevate my job and my work. That's the real goal. But ultimately, when, I'm, when the Shia comes, I'm going to go back to just doing full spiritual work because I'm going to Cohen. So, and I won't have to do any work uh, in a physical sense. I'll do spiritual work. But until then, I have to work physically and make that spiritual. That's part of the challenge of exile. So this meter of curl is a meter of godliness that proves we're different to, to the Arab nations and proves we're different to the non-Jewish. We're a godly nation. We have this 13th level, this level of, of a chad, of love, of a hav, of intimacy with Hashem. This is the beautiful level of the 13 attributes of Hashem. Now you're going to keep asking me, why at the end do we seem to get so many we get like an overload the eighth day. You not notice? Because it is like the highest part so uh, like you more. Leading up, all the candles have been lit. The 36 Mesechtas of Shas, you can go through the 36 second night Shabbos Erevin, the third night Pesach and Yom Pesach. You can go through the 30 meters of Rachim and at the end, Notes of Chesed, the Lofim, Notes of Abu Pesh, Chat Menachah, these last five attributes. And then you can go through the 12 tribes and on the eighth day is the last five tribes, Menashe Binyamin, which is the months we're in now, Menashe Binyamin, Dan, Asher, the Kali, leading up to Hunt and Purim, these, because remember the 12 tribes are connected to the 12 months, it's not just whatever. Yeah? Six on each side represents the six meters, like you said, the six days of the week. Before who, who, Shabbos and after Shabbos is 12, who made six this? and six. Who made this? this is made by a Siddiquim called Rav Simaya Zilberberg. He made this chart and his Hasidim handed out every Hanukkah. So, and it's based on all the Sif Swaram Kedoshim. It's 100 cent Amos. So the 12 tribes, the Aris are emphasized is this order of Yehuda, Isoska, Zvulin, that's connected to Nisin, Iyar, and Sivan. Reuven, Shimon, Gad is the Machane Reuven, that's the Machane we came when we first came to Israel during Av, uh, Tamas, Av, and Elo. When all you guys turned up in Elo, Gad at the end of Machane Reuven, you did too, we came back to Herzog. And then Ephraim and that is Tishrei, and, and that's Shabbos, that's the seventh tribe, that's the month of Shabbos, the seventh day of Hanukkah is connected to Shabbos. And the eighth day yeah, is 
is Menashe Binyamin Dan Hashem Nepali. And there's a way to complete what we devoted, the holy avoda we did on Roshani Nam Kippur. There's a way to complete it now in Hanukkah. It's called the Chosen Betok Chosen. It's the idea, it's, it's the final seal. Yeah, it says the Chosen Kohen Godel. That's what Rav Simaya said to me, the rabbi who wrote this. I'm not a chassid like him openly these days. I go, I'm going to see the Tolna Rebbe next week. He's my rabbi. But the, the Rav Simaya Zibelberg, I went to see him Moti Shabbos just at when, and he told me I'm the Chosen of the Kohen Godel. You got the host of the Kohen He called me the Kohen Godel. I'm not the Kohen Godel. I know I'm not. He likes to call me that. It gives me chizik. It makes me feel good, I suppose. Or maybe he believes it. Maybe he sees something I don't see. Whatever. If mercy on our generation to find the Kohen Godel, knowing where I'm holding, that means we're a very low generation. If I'm the Kohen Godel, forget about it. I'm probably not. But he calls me the Kohen Godel of Nachas Yankov, his Chavra, when I was there. Or maybe because I'm a tool, whatever it is. So, the, But the idea is not to get egotistic. The point is, the Kohen Godel gets rid of the ego. It's complete butterless to Hashem. He comes completely nullifies himself to Hashem in the Holy of Holies is completely working for the Jewish people. He has no sense of self in a negative sense. So then he's able to elevate all the Jewish people to the 13th level of oneness of Hashem, Echad. This is the idea of, of Echad is Gematria 13. And that's what these 13 attributes, they're connected to this level of purity that every Jew is inside the Holy of Holies. Every Jew has intrinsic good hidden inside them. Where was the Aaron Kodesh hid? Where was the real menorah hid? Not the one that the Romans stole. That wasn't the real menorah. The original menorah from Moshe Rabbeinu. Where was that hid? Where's that hid, guys? It's not in the Vatican. Where is it? Who knows? No, catacombs or not? Underneath where? In the catacombs. Underneath the temple. Yes. And it's hidden with names of God. No, no, and no one, no Arab can dig under there, no matter how far he digs and finds it. Because it's hidden with the name of God. They'll never find it until Mashiach comes and, and Eleonovi comes and shows us where it is. With purity and Tara, we'll be able to take it out. I thought, I thought the Christians took that. No, they took it. It was uh, the Romans. And it was... Uh, they didn't the hide it under the Vatican in the catacombs? Christians no. didn't really exist so much by that point, there were just some break-off movement. But the Romans were, were pagans who were running the story at that time, and they they came and took it back to the Vatican, but it was a very low-level version of the original. They didn't take the original. It's still something, and it still had Kedush, it still was used in the base of English, but it wasn't the original ones that Yeshua hid. He's hid the Aaron Kodesh. He hid Caleb from the base of English. It's a discussion exactly how much he hid and what he hid. Some people said that that menorah was the original menorah, but I don't think so. I don't think that's true. Because the Babylonians also took it. They also took the menorah as well, before that. So he dug it up and took it. I think you have to understand with these things of whether it's dug up or not. Like, for example, there's a Mishnah. My son actually learned it not so long ago. It's a Mishnah, and it says that there was a Kohen working in a, it was a mum. He had a mum, and it was a Kohen working in the limber yard of the base of English, where they had all the limber, lumber, sorry, not limber, lumber, lumber yard, excuse my English, you can start to get a bit wild. Yeah. Lumber is wood, yeah, you get that? Wood, you have to use for them as bed, and it has to get rid of all the worms, so someone doing that. And the Cohen with a mum, a Cohen who had a, like a funny eye or whatever it was, would work them. That would be his work, because he wasn't allowed to work in the, the, in, the, in the actual part of the base of English. So one Cohen was where he noticed a hole in the floor, and he went to try and dig it up, and that was the entrance way to these hidden tombs. Yeah. You know, in a Where, farm somewhere? You no, know, on the in the base of English. Next to on the side there's a there's a place. You look at Masef Yoma, which everyone's learning Daf Yoma right now. We're learning about the Yom Kippur, we're learning so about the Kohen Gadol. He went, no, he went to go dig it up, he went to go reveal it, that he knew where it was, and a fire came out of it and killed him. It went into his nose and his neshama went out. It was like safest neshama. It wasn't like, it was like, um, do, we know that it, do we know where this is or no? So it was hidden from us. We're not meant to know. The one guy, someone thought he found it, he was, he, his neshama went away. Yeah? He went up to heaven. So it's not for us to know until Mashiach comes. It's not the time for it. You know, like everyone watched, uh, what was it called? Uh, sorry to bring it up, but it's funny. Crusades of the Lost Ark. Yeah. Indiana Jones? No, Indiana Jones. Yeah. You saw that film? It's a good film. Uh, Indiana it's Jones is a good film. Crusaders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. Raiders, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Sorry. I get all mixed up. Anyway, so that was like them taking that idea and playing around with it. Yeah, they actually took the, the Ark. It they actually found one. it. It wasn't the real one. No, obviously it's not the real one, but... In the yeah, yeah but was, you think Hashem's going to allow some idiot to find yeah. it and let the Maksha mum have it? And finally, he killed them all in the film. But the damn uh, English guy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there was so certain sin for them watching them all burn up, considering how many people they burn up. Um, but anyway, yeah, we let's try and control my... Uh, this is another part of being a coin. You get a bit of a annoy for a sham, like Pinchas. You have a little bit of a fire to burn up those people that burned you. Yeah? 
You don't feel that a little bit? That's using the fire. It's more like revenge. Yeah, I, I, it's, part, it's in my blood for some reason. That's why I want to talk about golems one day. Oh, golems. It's like yeah, golems protected the Siddiquim. They used to make golems to protect them. And they had to go on dangerous things. Because the golem would never be able to get killed unless they took away the name of God. So they, someone could hack at them, shoot them, stab them. They wouldn't do anything to the golem. Yeah, so that's not 100%, but they, they were definitely golems. There's the golems, and Bashantar made a golem, there was a lot of Siddiqui made a golem. We're talking about it after this. Yeah, 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 sorry. You got me going. Anyway, so these 12 tribes, you have to remember, who are we connected to? We're in the last part. We have to know spiritually the Jewish people go according to the tribes. So the first generation was the tribe of Yehuda.